Today we are talking about the new moon in Leo, and this is about love and acceptance and where you shine. We have all of that plus predictions for each sign coming up. Hi everyone, I'm Donna Stellhorn, your Practical Astrologer, here to talk to you about the new moon in Leo on August 8th and what it means about uh, finding love, having self-love, um, and where you shine. And so we are going to cover all of this. We're going to start with an overview and then we will go in sign by sign. There are some timestamps in the description and the magic of YouTube will break it into chapters. So it should be quite easy to find your sign. I want to welcome all of you who have joined us today. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for your wonderful comments and for your helpful suggestions. <laughs> I do appreciate those. Um, also, um, I wanted to let you know really quickly that I do readings. There's some information about that in the description box, as well as uh, links to my books and my courses. I also write weekly and monthly columns for various websites uh, such as horoscope.com, astrology.com, and Conscious Community Magazine. I write the weekly Western predictions for astrology.com and so there is a link in the description for that. Okay, let's get started. You know, when we're looking at the Leo energy, which this new moon is, we have to remember what Leo is. Leo is fixed fire, and this is like a bonfire, like something you see off in the distance in the desert, and you're drawn to it. You, you want to know what's going on. And so Leo is this energy of, of saying, look at me, I, I'm here, come to me. So, but it's fixed. And so when we have a fixed sign, we know it doesn't move. And so you can't pick a bonfire up and move it. And so if you are that bonfire, if you are shining your light, you know, uh, what you have to offer, uh, what creativity you can do, what love you can give to the world, you are still though stationary and asking for the people who want this to come to you. Now, of course, this can feel quite risky when you are, you know, standing there suggesting that that you have something to offer. And so you are doing something that a lot of people may feel some trepidation about, some concerns. And this is why we associate Leo or the fifth house with also risky investments, because being creative or actually telling the world, you know, I'm, I'm here and I can love you is a risk because, you know, we as the bonfire now can't choose who approaches, who accepts it. And, and so you put out the call and say, I want to have, you know, somebody in my life. But, you know, in your mind, you might be thinking, but I want that person over there. And it doesn't work that way. Not with this Leo energy. It, it is more about saying, I am here ready for a love relationship. And then you have to say, all right, who's coming to my call? And, and are these people, you know, whoever is coming, is, is that love of my life among these people? And so that's inherently the risk that you have to take. The risk also is involved with what you're creating out in the world. And this is part of that self-expression. You know, we, the love that you're giving the world, it can be very tangible things like the, the music that you're writing or the art you're producing. And creativity encompasses so many things. It's, it can be just the opinions that you are crafting and putting out there in the world. The, it is taking your thoughts and your considerations and the sum of your experiences and making a very unique statement. And that's, that's creative in itself. And it's risky because you don't know what kind of response you're going to get. Um, you know, if, if you have tried to do things on social media already, you know, um, and I have to say, social media has given us so many opportunities. You know, I, I remember a time where there was such a gatekeeper 
to you know publishing a book or putting out music or things like that and now it's open to everyone and that comes with a risk of that the entire world can comment on what you've produced uh, and what you're putting out into the world and so this idea that that you know you can do this leo energy and stay 100 percent safe it, it's just not there uh, leo is about adventure it's about taking the risk to say i'm going to put myself out there in the world and then i'm going to allow the world to respond however they do so along with creation of course leo represents procreation and that means your kids and so this is you know how you are you know, extending your name, your line out into the world through what you teach your children. And if you don't have kids, it, you know, everything goes out there and it has a little life of its own too. The books you write, the music you put out, you have to nurture those for a while. And then as, as they grow, they can take on a life of their own. And so, and then that thing in itself starts to generate the followings, the the love, the adoration, etc. But going back to the children idea, you know, when we are highlighting this area for you, and we'll talk about individual signs in a moment, when we when we highlight this area for you, we are also highlighting some aspect of your children. And that is maybe what they are working on. And what you might be super irritated by what they're not doing. But this is a time to then look and say, well, how am I doing the same? How, how, you know, like I'm, I might be giving advice to my kids, but that's advice for me. And because they're on their own path, or maybe it's advice for both of you. But the amazing thing is about the mirror is that when you actually, you know, make the change yourself, everybody else magically fixes themselves it's it's amazing and so if we spend more time being introspective uh you know using tools like astrology to see more of who we are you know having you know uh, and a self-awareness we can not only grow so much but other people seem to shift and change as we do it so while you might spend a lot of time doting on your children and, and your pets, it's a time to recognize that you are special. There is a spark inside of you that can grow into a bonfire. And so this new moon tells us what is lighting up in your chart, where you should put emphasis, and, and where you really need to create something that that is you. And you do this generously you know uh, with this idea that other people may or may not like what you create and that's okay and the person that you really want to approve of you or or love you back they have choice they may or may not do that and we still have to create something in the world we still have to to you know voice our gift so and yes that's inherently risky and that's that's why you know leo feels like this great and wonderful sign but you know the lion is still scary um you know we admire it from a distance and now it's time to embrace the lion okay let's go sign by sign okay aries natives you guys are doing this new moon in your house of kids creativity uh, romance as well as risky investments we'll talk about the risky investments in a moment let's get right to the things that you should be taking risks about and that is taking risks when it comes to you know, loving your kids even though sometimes they may drive you crazy it it's also about you know putting love out into the world and seeing who answers your call for a love romantic relationship I kind of stumbled over that sentence didn't I so this is a time you might you know sit on your balcony or take a walk through a park and just envision the type of love relationship you want to have uh, you might picture 
you know, how you meet that person, how the first couple of dates would go, how you feel about connecting with this person, but not necessarily picturing their face, not picturing anything to identify that person. I, I know that sounds hard because we can, of course, fall badly, deeply in love with an individual, but sometimes, and sometimes that works out fantastic, and sometimes it doesn't. And we, we have to recognize that this world is so big and so vast that there are so many people out there. And when there is a, a good chart connection, yes, that helps enormously, but there also has to be willingness of the spirit to, to want to be together. And sometimes people, they're just not ready. They, they, they have other things there or people that they're interested in. And so we have to say, okay, we will just be the bonfire and keep looking. So when it comes to relationships, for you this time, we don't see an aspect between Venus and Mars and, and Chiron has been traveling through your first house. And this is about healing yourself. And as you heal yourself, then you are going to find that the doors open up and people are there to love you. But that is maybe spending the next two weeks doing some introspection on well, why you are feeling stuck? What, what is holding you back? Are you trying to make yourself perfect to be accepted by the other person? When in actuality, the Leo energy says that, that you are already complete. You are already shining. And so if this person in front of you is not recognizing it, then you need to shine for somebody else. When it comes to home and family, you're pulling energy from that new moon in your fifth house, which says that there's a lot of emphasis on kids. And that's probable because maybe a lot of kids are going to go back to school in a few weeks. And so you have tons of things to do. First, you have to get them all ready to go, but also you are feeling like, uh, you know, you have just a few weeks of summer left to spend with them. And so you, you might be really focused on your kids. This is some good energy for fertility, especially getting help with fertility. It is already past that opposition with Saturn. And so that can mean that there are some, some you know, different uh, people you can see, different methods you can try and things like that. This is a wonderful energy for also doing creativity at home. And so maybe you're redecorating, maybe you're doing art, maybe you're writing your novel or something like that. That's my pantomime writing. <laughs> So, so I really recommend, you know, even if you're super busy trying to get some of this done, this, this in this two week period. Now, when we look at your money, you're pulling money from that Venus in the sixth house, which says that the more you work, the more you are organized, the more you keep everything straight, the better and more financially abundant you're going to be. And this is really good energy for doing a written budget or really, you know, tracking your spending or uh, keeping an awareness of what you're purchasing and why you're purchasing it. Now, when we look at money that comes from a business, uh, from a family business or from a passive income source, the Venus is doing a wonderful trying to that Pluto. And that means you have great opportunities for accumulating more money from one of these sources over the next couple of weeks. And so you really do want to do the push. You know, the, the issue can happen that when we do the Leo new moon, we all just want to have fun. And, you know, we don't necessarily want to take on the responsibilities, but with your money planet being in your house of work right now and making a trine to Pluto in your house of career, it really says to give your career a push right now because and I shouldn't have used the word career because this is your passive income source house or your business income source house. But if you can give that a push this time, you can really start to accumulate some money now and in the future. 
And when it comes to money derived from career, you have a couple of things going on. First of all, Jupiter is back in your house and that does mean it can expand your income. Plus Venus is making a trine to Uranus and of course Uranus is in a money house. So this is lining up to be some of the best energy for you for asking for a raise, getting more hours or shifting jobs to make more money. You have a lot of negotiating power at this time. You have the skill set people are looking for and they are willing to be flexible when it comes to money or your hours or things like that. So if this is a great time to pursue that. And when it comes to risky investments, of course, you're doing the new moon there, which is fantastic. It can shine a light and show you opportunities that you might not have considered before. And it not just shows you that the opportunity exists, but also can bring you the people or the information you need to assess whether it's a good opportunity. Now, when we look at the relationship between Venus and the sun, they're making a semi sextile, which does mean that there is something there. There's, there is a possibility of making some extra money through something that people would consider risky or highly leveraged or just very unusual. A semi sextile is not the easiest of aspects. It does pull you slightly out of your comfort zone, which means that you might have to study more than you expect. Uh, you can't just sign on the dotted line. You have to review things or you have to take um, and do some activities that you don't really enjoy. And from this, I would say that's more like spreadsheets and analysis, back office stuff rather than the fun stuff. And so, you know, you might spend a lot of time maybe designing a new t-shirt and all that, but you have to learn how the website works or how to promote it to other people. You know, I see a lot of my clients now who are starting to become really dissatisfied with their social media companies because they're putting out um, posts on a regular basis, which is good, but those posts are flat and uninteresting. And this is the problem. It, it takes work to come up with that, that creative spark that is really going to bring people to you. But you know, with this wonderful house of creativity right now, this is the time to do it. Um, you know, over, over this next couple of weeks, you plant the seeds for stuff that can last throughout the year, but it starts with you looking and saying, you know, what's compelling about what I'm putting out now and how can I really put more of me into those posts? Okay, Taurus native, you guys are doing this new moon in your house of home and family. And this does mean that this is highlighted. So there's a big spotlight on, you know, whether you're getting along with your family, what is up with your dwelling? Uh, is this the place you should be leaving? leaving. Is this the place you should be living? Is there a, a thing that you need to do to make it more comfortable, uh, to make it a better place for you? Or are there signs from, you know, your uh, landlord or the neighborhood itself that says that you should be considering moving on? This is also because Leo is inherently has that sense of risk to it. And Taurus energy doesn't necessarily like risk. It might be you asking yourself the question of whether to try to buy in this real estate market, which is so crazy right now, or whether you could sell and then maybe rent for a little bit until the market settles down. Or is that going to be something where, uh, you know, in your marketplace, you get priced out. So, and that's, that's a very difficult question because that is based on a location uh, more than the timing itself. So we do see in some parts of the country, I mean, the United States, um, that, you know, some places are not experiencing a crazy market. And of course, some places are experiencing a super crazy market. And so some awareness of that is what's happening for you this time. When it comes to love relationships, you're doing some great energy because Venus is making a trine with Pluto. And this does indicate that there are some real opportunities to make a strong connection. Now, this is um, possible new connections as well as getting closer with the person you're dating. It does mean that there's, there's still a little work involved because Venus is in Virgo. And that does mean to sit down and look at the details of what 
you're doing. And that could mean rewriting your profile on an online dating site or sitting down with your sweetheart and just having a real heart to heart talk. And if you're feeling like, oh, that's going to scare them off or something like that, then you, you're not feeling like you have a foundation in a relationship anyway. And so it would be time to say to yourself, well, what could create a better foundation in this relationship or and this is going back to what we talked about in the introduction, is this person just not that interested? Because in this gigantic world that we're in with so many people, there can be somebody else who makes you just as happy. It's, it is possible, it is even probable that there is more than one match out there for you. And so, you know, if, if you're struggling in this area, now you have a good aspect to make something happen. When it comes to home and family, of course, we already talked about the dwelling itself. When we are looking at your family, of course, the sun is there shining a big spotlight on what's going on in the family itself. You're past that aspect, that opposition to Saturn. And so things could be settling down at home, feeling more comfortable. You know, you're even past that square uh, from Uranus. So a lot of changes may have already been decided and now you're saying okay we know how long we're gonna stay we know what we're doing and so now it's time to just find some fun you know maybe cooking at home playing games you know doing something that it has a little bit more activity to it than just sitting and watching a screen so so finding things that you guys can do together would be really good when it comes to your money you're pulling money from that mercury in that fourth house of home and family this does say that some money can be made through something related to your dwelling. And that is, you know, maybe renting out a room or doing Airbnb or selling the house, of course. But also it is about maybe having a, a business in your home, you know, or maybe going through your closets and uh, seeing what you can sell on eBay or Etsy or something like that. So there are money sources at home. There also uh, is this idea that you're working out of the home. And so if your boss is starting to say, well, we want you to come back into the office, this would indicate that you have at least two more weeks where you can have some negotiation with them to say, mm, not quite yet, I wanna stay home. Now, when we look at your uh, money that comes from businesses, um, traditional investments or passive income sources, uh, or also your family, uh, your spouse, um, people like that, uh, Mercury is doing an opposition to Jupiter, which does indicate that there are some great money making opportunities at this time. So now, uh, you know, I was just thinking how it's not really a money making opportunity to get money from family, but there is still that work of coming together and making the agreement. It's really possible that you guys are pooling your resources to do some bigger investments and that could be really good at this time. But it also says that money from your standard investments are a little more likely to make money uh, for you and and also that your business is doing well. So you have some good energy over the next two weeks. When it comes to money derived from career, uh, Mercury is making it in conjunct to that Neptune, which does mean that you do have the possibilities of making more money, but there is something that you don't necessarily want to do to get that. And it's probably around either working a different shift or working in and doing some responsibilities you don't want to do, or perhaps actually just going to your boss and asking them. Now with the in conjunct, if you did go to your boss and ask, you're probably going to get a no right out of the gate and then through some negotiations you could get more money so you are doing an aspect and I like to see an aspect but it is not the happiest of aspects and because this energy is going to change rather quickly if you have an inclination that you want to ask for a raise over the next few months you might want to wait till this lines up better which it will but right now it is you know going to be a little wonky um now that that said, if you don't want to wait, if you were ready to ask them, you were like, you have your appointment for the next day, then by all means, go ahead and do it and recognize that you might get some pushback, but you will be able to negotiate for something. 
Now, when it comes to risky investments, we are focusing in on that Mercury, which is making an in conjunct to Pluto. And Pluto is up in the ninth house of contracts, which means that while you can make more money, you have the issue that there's something that's not right in the contract or that the agreement that you made the handshake deal with is now not in writing and you're going to have to make some sort of adjustments. Um, because the Pluto is incredibly powerful and can feel overwhelming, it might be your inclination to say, I don't even want to deal with the contract. I'm just going to give that to somebody else to do, or I'm not even going to read it. I'm just going to sign it. And that's not a good thing to do. You want to make sure that you fully understand this. And that's the in conjunct energy. It's a lot of work, painstaking stuff where you probably have to look up a lot of words and things like that because they're in legal ease. All of that, though, is worth the time and effort because there is the possibility with that Mars and Venus in that house to gain something substantial through a risky investment. But you have to clear up this in conjunct. OK, Gemini natives, you guys are doing this uh, new moon in your house of communication an area that you know and love. So this could be a very happy time for you. You will have an opportunity to be heard. That is that uh, maybe your posts are getting more readership or you are going to be speaking somewhere or you're on stage doing something or that you're publishing your novel or somebody wants to look at your screenplay. Some some part of your communication is being heard. It also so does is in the area of neighbors and siblings and so your neighbors may start taking their trash cans in and or doing whatever else you requested and you may hear from your siblings in a very positive way you know somebody uh, who you might have been arguing with and now you're getting along better or perhaps you don't speak that often and now suddenly they are phoning you when it comes to relationships, you are doing some good energy because Mercury is making an opposition to Jupiter. It does say that there is some compromises that need to happen. And that's probably in the scheduling because Mercury is in the third house. And so that is that that they want to see you, you want to see them, but you're both working a lot or you both have other obligations or one of you's traveling or something like that. So, so it's, it's there and you can make a connection, but there, there is something where you've got to go a little bit of an extra mile. And it is also that in your communication, there is a definite back and forth happening. And that is that, that you might be sitting by the phone waiting for somebody to call. But of course, the moment you call, you'll get a response. And so, if you are the person with the Gemini or the Gemini rising, you're the one who needs to initiate if you want to get something back. When it comes to home and family, you are doing some good energy. You are pulling energy from that Mercury uh, in that third house of siblings and neighbors. So that's wonderful. Plus Mars and Venus are in this house for you. And so that means that you have a lot of activity going on, but you know, it's very pleasant activity. You might be decluttering, but in a joyful way, you could be having some parties or get togethers, or the family could be, you know, uh, going on little day trips or things like that. So, so we have some very positive energy for home and family this time. When it comes to your money, you're pulling money from that moon in the house of communication. And so that's a reminder that when you ask for something, you are much more likely to receive it. And it is also about not stomping with one person. Remember, this is that Leo energy that says you're putting out this message to many people and seeing who answers the call. So when you're looking for money, that is to not just ask one person if they'll buy your products or if they'll hire you, but to ask many people and you will see then several opportunities step forward. Word. This is also about how you speak to yourself about your prospects of making money. If you are always saying to yourself that you're a screw up or that you can't keep control of your money or, you know, you just don't have a head for money or any of these other kind of negative affirmations. Remember, those are going right into your subconscious and not helping you one bit. And so 
yes, you, do, you don't want to lie to yourself. You don't want to say, oh, I'm amazing with money when you're not. But you can instead ask yourself a question of how can I easily improve my money circumstances or how can I uh, easily find a way to be better at handling my money? And as then you do discover these things, then you can build your confidence and you will build your bank accounts at the same time. Now, when we look at your money that comes from your business, uh, from family members or uh, from uh, traditional investments, you know, like stocks or bonds or things like that, uh, the moon is making an opposition to Saturn, which does indicate you will be accumulating money during this period. So you have some great money opportunities. There is some sort of compromise that's going to happen. Uh, you know, maybe you have to give back some of the profits in some way, like it's the stock shoots up and then it drops back down below your your level. Like maybe you're doing like a, a 10% where, you know, you're, you're just watching when it drops 10%, then you sell. Um, maybe that's your sell trigger. Um, and so you gave back 10%, but that's okay because you still were able to uh, collect this tidy profit. So just recognize that with that opposition, there's some little compromises that are being made, but overall it's a win-win. When it comes to money derived from career, uh, you are not making an aspect between Moon and Mars. And so that does indicate that your uh, career energy is pretty steady. It's not really changing this time. And that does indicate it's hard to ask for a raise. You know, that Mars is sitting in your house of home and family. And so maybe you are foregoing extra money so that you have a more flexible schedule or you get to work at home or you know there's something for your family and so and so you might be feeling perfectly fine with that agreement if you're looking for a job you do still have jupiter right at the top of your chart which does indicate that there are more opportunities out there than you know so you should be doing pretty well plus the new moon is in your house of communication for interviewing so review interviewing techniques there's some amazing videos on that on youtube and you can do very well in finding a new job when it comes to risky investments and these are things like buying a franchise or buying a lot of bitcoin coin or something like that. Venus is making a semi sextile to the moon, which is an aspect. So there is the possibility of accumulating money during this period. However, it is a difficult aspect outside your comfort zone. And because of its placement, I would either say that you're possibly still, you know, going through all the information about this uh, different type of investment. You're still learning about it or somebody at home is not feeling this is the direction for you to go. And so they are urging caution with a semi sextile, you know, really try to limit how much you're investing in this, you know, whatever it is, this instrument, because the semi sextile again has some irritations. It has some problems with it, but because it is an aspect, it does show there is the possibility of accumulating money for this two week period. Okay, Cancer Natives, you guys are doing this new moon energy in your house of money. So that's good right out of the gate. This shines a light on your money situation and reminds you that as you, you know, love yourself, as you have a sense of deserving, more opportunities will come in. If you are not happy with yourself, if there's something that you're doing on a regular basis and you're beating yourself up for doing that thing, then stop doing that thing. I know that sounds simplistic, but it really boils down to that. Of course, some of you might point out that a person could be addicted or have some other reason that they continue to do the negative behavior. But if that's the case, then stop beating yourself up about it. Instead, look at it from a rational standpoint, find some help, uh, find, because there are, are resources out there, especially for you this time to, to find some help with this and, and get you past this. But you know, berating yourself, you know, taking yourself to task about things is not helping you in the things that you want. And that is to have joy and to accumulate some security. 
Now, this new moon also lighting up your house of, you know, possessions and money also says to take a look at your spending and, you know, start writing down what you're spending, you know, ask yourself uh, why you want to buy something, maybe put it in the shopping cart for a few days before pushing that buy now button. So just, and also just taking a look around your house and saying, you know, what can I do with the stuff that I already have? Or can I get rid of some of this? stuff before I acquire something new. So it, it is about an awareness of your possessions. When it comes to relationships, you're doing some good energy because the moon's making an opposition to Saturn. And that indicates that you can find somebody new or you can strengthen your current relationship. There, there is this energy of compromise built into this opposition. And so that does mean that you have to be listening to each other. You have to, you know, state what it is that you really want rather than kind of beating around the bush or maybe hoping that they figure it out. You know, most people in the world have some level of psychic ability, but they don't know exactly what you're thinking. And so it's a good idea to have open communication about this. When it comes to family, you're pulling energy from that Venus in your house of communication. So communication is important at home as well. This indicates that it would be a good idea for you to connect with siblings or cousins or, you know, any relative that is in your kind of age group, you know, like maybe you have a really young aunt or somebody like that. So. So thinking about these people and connecting with them can be very helpful. It is also about connecting to your neighbors in a positive way, maybe meeting the neighbors, saying hi. And then after you've established a little bit of a connection, then you can tell them to stop playing their, you know, death metal band at two o'clock in the morning or whatever. So, you know, the, it starts though with this pleasant sort of connection and then can move to something that's more precise. So when it comes to your money, you're pulling money from the sun in the house of money. And so, of course, that's fantastic. But it also sets the tone for the next year of energy where it, what you do over the next two weeks can help you create more income sources, save more of your money or put it to the places that are really going to be important to you in the long term. So this sun, of course, is already past that opposition to Saturn. It's past the square to Uranus. So now you have an opportunity for some smoother sailing. So you, of course, still could have some debt that you're paying off. The Saturn's up in your house of debt, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it. The sun is lighting up opportunities for you, maybe to get lower interest rates or build consolidation loan or something like that. And when, when you are thinking about doing something like that, uh, like a bill consolidation loan, do find a legitimate bank to do it. I know there are a lot of companies that offer, you know, thousands of dollars, but those contracts can be a little hard to negotiate and, um, and very difficult, you know, like, they're not in your favor most of the time. So be super careful if you are getting some offer of money at this time, because the Saturn would indicate that if you go with a legitimate bank, you have a much better time of getting through this. When it comes to money from traditional investments or your own business or a family business, uh, you're doing a great aspect. The sun is making a square to Uranus. And so you have definite opportunities to accumulate money over this two week period. And that is that you're making more sales or your stocks are going up or something like that. So you might be taking some profits and putting those into long term savings or paying down debt. So you show some really good energy. And so you do want to lean into this, you know, like put this on your list of looking for these sources and really actively pursuing leads. When it comes to money derived from career, the sun is making a semi sextile to Venus. And while it's not the strongest of aspects, it is an aspect and we love an aspect. So this says that you could make more money uh, asking for a raise or asking for more hours or a different shift or things like that. 
it's a semi-sex style, so there's going to be some sort of compromise that you have to make that maybe is a little bit irritating. You know, maybe you don't get exactly the shift you want, or, you know, they're asking you to take on an extra responsibility you didn't want to do. And you'll have to weigh that with what they're offering, but you can negotiate something this time. This also says that if you're uh, in negotiations for getting a new job, you can ask for a little bit more money than you are what they're offering, but you can't necessarily get a lot more money. When it comes to risky investments, this is where I need to caution you because the sun is not making an aspect to Pluto, nor is it making an aspect to Mars. And this says that the timing is off. This could mean that you just need to cool your heels and whatever investment that you're in, you just need to ride it out, no matter if you're on a bunking Bronco or not. So, but it also says that if you're thinking about, you know, signing on the dotted line right now, try to wait either wait outside this two week period and see what the next two week period is going to bring or you know just like go back and negotiate some of the the um what are those things called <laughs> just go back and negotiate you know this can be some challenging news while you're doing such a strong money house but uh it is still if the things don't line up, it's very hard to accumulate the money and that is to take the profits. So again, you know, if you're already in the investment, things are just moving along. It's, it's not that, you know, like things could be going up and down, but at the end, you look like you're about making the same as you were before. It's just that if you're trying to get into the investment, that's when you want to wait. Okay, Leo natives, you guys are doing this new moon in your own sign. And so that's in your house of confidence, uh, constitution, your physical energy and your sense, your presence out in the world. So that means you are very much seen. That's really good news for relationships in general for you. It also is that you know, people are going to notice your natural confidence. And Leo, you do tend to have some natural confidence, but when you don't, it can be kind of like, you know, like a spotlight's on it. And so this is not necessarily for you to fake it until you make it, but to do that, that memory affirmation, or I don't really have a good name for it yet. I'm working on it. It's, it is when you go back into your own past and look at things that you did well, things that you are proud of, things that you accomplished, and now, then affirming things that are going to happen in the future based on those past achievements. And so in other words, that is a person who's, you know, maybe they're going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro and they're like, ah, oh, that's really tall. But then they think, oh, but wait, I've done a lot of hiking in the past. You know, I, I always pack very well. I have good friends to support me. So, so you look back in the past for the components to do this bigger thing. As I mentioned before, when it comes to relationships, you're doing some amazing energy because the spotlight is on you. So you're easily seen and the sun is making a square to Uranus. So this indicates that you could meet someone who's quite exceptional for you during this two week period. So you definitely want to get out there, you know, and update your online dating profile, um, you know, put better pictures up, you know, do, do something to shift things because you know what we know from studying feng shui is it's the object is helpful but it's actually the moving of the object that makes such a difference because the universe can see movement so and as you are a bonfire right now or you know being leo you're always bonfire is it's difficult for you to move but we can make the bonfire bigger we can shine and so that is you know how can you shine brighter in your online profile or you know when you're out in the world you know put a smile on your face um wear some bright colors say hi to people this is the things where where the inner you can be seen and that's when you attract the person who has the 
chart connections who wants to be with you. When it comes to home and family, you're pulling energy from that Pluto in your house of routines, as well as that Mars in the second house of money. And so this indicates that you might be spending some money on things that help you take care of the house. So you might be buying a new washer and dryer or putting in an air conditioning system or, you know, building an outdoor room or something like that. So it looks like you're doing quite practical things. Um, you might have, um, you might have to spend a little extra because, you know, it's hard to get materials right now. It's, it's very hard to find help. So, so that there are some things you might be doing yourself. Uh, you also do want to kind of take your time at it. So Mars is in a fixed house and that means, you know, take it slow. You know, it doesn't all have to be done right away. Now on the family note, it is possible that somebody in the family will be coming to you to ask for money. And that's because of that Mars in your house of money. And so some sort of talk or negotiation needs to happen because of that. You know, uh, this Mars is not making an aspect to the sun. And so there is a little disconnect between you and their request. Like either you're surprised that they're requesting it or it's way more money than, than you know, you would possibly give them. And so you're going to have to find find some way of diplomatically saying no. Now, when it comes to your money, you're pulling money from that Mercury in the first house in your own sign of Leo. So that is all great because that is that if you put your name out there, if you tell people you've done something, if you say, you know, look, I'm in charge, then you make money. That's fantastic. However, this Mercury is going to make an inconjunct to that Pluto in the sixth house, which means you can easily overschedule yourself. So you do want to be aware of how much you're promising because you do not want to go back on a promise. So when you're giving a timeline, you might want to double it or even triple it to say, instead of saying it'll be done in a day, say it'll be done in two days or three days. And then if you can bring it in early, that's great. But there could be some other things that come up that cause some delays. So, but otherwise money looks like it is flowing directly into your hands because Mercury is in your first house. When it comes to money that is from traditional investments or your own business, uh, Mercury is making an in conjunct to Neptune. And so you are doing an aspect that's wonderful, but it does say that there is something outside your comfort zone happening. And so maybe you were realizing that you need to drop a client because they are not your ideal client and, and serving them is not serving either of you, or perhaps you do need to branch out slightly in your investments. Perhaps you are very focused on bonds, but you don't think bonds are performing for you. And so you are looking at stocks or maybe you do mutual funds and now you're thinking about doing ETFs. Uh, so, and that's different than NFTs. Don't get those two confused. <laughs> an ETF is an electronically traded fund. It is kind of like a mutual fund, but it trades like a stock. Um, you know, there's tons of information about that online. Um, so you do show the aspect and so you can accumulate money during this period, but there is something pulling you outside your comfort zone. When it comes to money derived from career, yes, you have some good energy because the mercury is in your house, uh, in your first house and it's in your own sign because it's going to make that in conjunct to Pluto in your house of work. I would say be a little careful about what you're asking for, because then the boss can turn around and say, now that you have more money, I'm going to dump a bunch of work on you. So you may want to negotiate those finer points to say, I want more money, but I want to keep this level of activity and then do some negotiating from that point or accept a one or two of the extra things to do, but not all of them. But otherwise, you are doing some good energy for accumulating more money through your career this time. And when it comes to risky investments, and these are those NFTs, those uh, non-fungible tokens, <laughs> and uh, that's a tough word, um, and, or things like, um, you know, that you'd have to explain to your grandpa over a long period of time. Uh, those types of investments, um, Mercury is doing an opposition to Jupiter, which does give you some opportunities in this area. The Jupiter's in your house of relationships. So this means bringing in a business partner or having somebody mentor you about this. Uh, there are still, um, you know, 
some sort of compromise will happen. You might have to uh, maybe take a less of a percentage than you wanted, or you might have to give some percentage to an investor, but you are looking pretty good here. So you can move forward, albeit cautiously. I'm always gonna say that when it's risky investments, uh, you know, be careful about betting the farm, even when you're doing a good aspect, because there can be mitigating circumstances like your own chart, which I don't have in front of me. And so it would be really helpful if, you know, if you are actually sitting there thinking about a risky investment and you're ready to pull the trigger, call your astrologer, get them to do your chart and look at this. Um, you know, I do readings myself, but if you already have an astrologer, go to that person and have them do an analysis just for you, because what I'm doing here is very general. And so you have to, you know, look specifically if you're thinking about investing, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. Okay, Virgo natives, you guys are doing this new moon in your house of hidden things, hidden talents, intuition, and your shadow self. And so this is like putting this big spotlight on this area that is usually in darkness. And so there is some real advantages here because this can really facilitate doing some inner work, clearing out some blocks, uh, finding the patterns that you might be trapped in and breaking free of those patterns. It also is an opportunity for you to, you know, renew co-creating with the universe. And, and that means that you are suggesting to the universe what your goals are and the universe is opening up some opportunities along with some lessons because that's the way the universe works. Uh, it brings a gift with a lesson. And so if you can recognize the lesson and embrace that lesson, then things really flow. So with this particular uh, new moon, Basically, the lesson is what what are the unconscious habits that are happening? What what is what are the things that you're reacting to versus allowing yourself that space to think about it? Uh, you know, I I think that meditation is a very helpful practice for this. If you find this is an issue for you that that you tend to react, because what meditation really teaches a person is to create some space between the before you have the thought or reaction and when that happens because the whole practice of meditation is that you know you are you know thoughts come up and then you say to yourself okay i'm not going to think about that right now i'm going to think about that some other time and so you let it go but after a time of meditation what happens is that you start to feel that a thought is going to come up and so you can stop it before the thought even happens. And that is that you're creating a space there for you to choose something else. So this, this actually, this new moon for you is really excellent. It's a one time a year where this house is lit up for this purpose. And so, you know, renewing a practice of meditation, but also just recognizing you know, maybe throughout the day, how you're reacting to something and saying, all right, can I choose something different? Now, of course, this also highlights your intuition. And so if you're working on learning tarot cards or uh, I Ching or Pendulum or any of the other psychic tools, this is a really great time to be studying that. Now, when we look at relationships for you, we have some excellent energy. Even though Jupiter has crossed back into your sixth house, it has it's so recently crossed your ascendant descendant line that there is still that vibration happening. Uh, additionally, you have Mars and Venus in your own sign, so that's attracting a lot of positive attention. Plus, Mercury is making an inconjunct. I had to look an inconjunct uh, to Neptune. And while that's not the easiest of aspects, it's certainly, you know, it, it gives you an opportunity because it is an aspect. Now, the interesting part of all of this is the ruler of your sign is in that 12th house, that hidden house. And so what I would suggest is if you're wanting to meet somebody that you do a visualization first and then go out on the online dating 
site or then go out into the world. Additionally, if you are, you know, wanting to strengthen the relationship you already have, first do the visualization or which can also be a prayer, uh, a meditation or something like that on how you can strengthen the relationship, you know, asking the universe or picturing that the relationship is better and then go see your sweetheart, then interact with this person. Now, when it comes to home and family, you are pulling energy from that Jupiter that is now out of your house of relationships and into your house of work and routines. And so this is about everybody coming together and getting ready now for the school year. Uh, this means that all, you know, uh, routines are changing and uh, maybe you have to streamline things or, uh, you know, put its systems into place where things run more smoothly. Jupiter here is the last planet uh, that is the planet at the highest degree. And so this is something that maybe has been on your mind for a while, you know, talking to the family or whoever lives in the house with you about chipping in. And maybe you've been looking for different ways of doing this. Uh, this is a time to try something different uh, in regards to this, you know, maybe maybe you have, uh, you know, tried to get the kids to do things by, um, you know, telling them they should or uh, maybe you've offered them an allowance or things like that. But, uh, you know, there's tons of information online about how to get kids to cooperate more, uh, how to deal with roommates, how to deal with different personalities and things like that. And so pulling in some new information because the Jupiter's in Aquarius now to find a way to harmonize the house is really in line with this energy. When it comes to your money, you're pulling money from that Venus in Virgo your own sign in your house of confidence. And so it says that whatever you're putting your name on, whatever you're saying, I did this, that's the thing that's going to bring you money. So if you're working on a team, make sure that the team knows your contribution, or I should say the boss knows, the team probably already knows. And uh, also though, you know, if, if you own your own business or, you know, anything that you're doing where there's, there's another name on things, you might want to start putting your name on there as well, just for the next couple of weeks. So you can capitalize on this energy when it comes to money from your business or traditional investments. Venus isn't making an aspect with Mars and Chiron is still, of course, going through your house, uh, your eighth house of resources from others. And so some of the issue that we have here is there does need to be some sort of healing about this. And that is that maybe you have invested in the past and it didn't go so well and you are pushing that aside. You're saying, I'm not going to do that. Or maybe it's the same from your own business. And one of the ways to heal from this is to really look at what went wrong? Why did it happen? And not to, you know, put this all on you, but to say, how can I avoid this happening in the future? You know, our ability to look at our mistakes, it's, it is so hard. Yes. You know, I hate it. Everybody hates it. It, but it is so important to do to be able to move forward without repeating the mistakes. So this this is a time just for this two week period where things are not lined up to take a look at why you make decisions the way you do and what caused things to go wrong. Uh, you know, what was your part in it so that you can correct that for the future. Now, when it comes to money derived from career, things are a little better. Uh, that's because Venus is making a semi sextile to that moon, but the moon is buried in the 12th, which means you're probably working on projects behind the scenes or you're still working at home. Maybe some people are going back into the office and so they have more visibility. And so it's going to be necessary for you to you know, show up to the Zoom meetings and turn your camera on and be alert, be aware of what's going on over the next two weeks, because you do have an opportunity to get more hours or get a better project, something that makes you more visible and to get more money. And, but it does mean that 
that management has to see you. And so that's the little bit of irritation there. Otherwise, the energy is quite good. And then when it comes to risky investments, and these would be the things that take a lot of time, energy, or money to get going, this is, um, it's saying that the energy is pretty steady. Uh, I'm not seeing a big windfall because Venus is not making an aspect with Saturn. And so everything's just kind of moving along at the pace it has been. So if you have been uh, deriving an income from this, then you're making about the same as usual. Otherwise, you know, it's, it is that you're still doing the work perhaps on spec and you have not received any sort of benefits yet. That is going to continue for the next couple of weeks. If you're in the contract process, you do want to put in the effort because Saturn, the ruler of this house, is of course going through your sixth house and that is to go through something with a fine tooth comb to look at each detail to really think it through. And so it's good for the next two weeks to be taking time to do that. That can help move your project forward even though you're not seeing the big profits this time. Okay, Libra natives, you guys are doing this new moon in your house of friendships, technology, and the future. And so when it comes to friendships, this is really highlighting this energy that says, you know, how, how are you connecting with friends? How are you meeting new friends? You know, are there friends who have fallen by the wayside over the last couple of years because of all the stuff going on in the world? And, and it is, it, it's very much about, you know, you are a great friend. You, you are, you are polite and kind and you have this ability to connect, but being this Libra energy, you sometimes hold back because you, you might think that you don't know how to get out of obligations that you don't want to do, or that sometimes it just can become overwhelming. And so this is to remind yourself that you are such a good friend and that you can connect with people. And these people will understand if you say, okay, now, now I have too many obligations on my calendar and I have to say no to something. So I, I think that this energy for you this time is very much about looking at the types of relationships, you know, friendships that you want to have and how can you expand those. Now, this is also your area of community. So you might be doing something for the community and that is being part of a group or organization or, you know, helping clean up the beach or, you know, helping build trails at a park or something like that. It is about technology and we are still in a non-Mercury retrograde period. So if you're going to upgrade your technology, this could be a very good time. And this is about your future. And so it's, it's one of those things that is kind of that universal truth that if you have a goal in mind, you are much more likely to achieve that goal. And that is, you know, try to think about where you want to be in five years or even 10 years and where you're heading. And yes, it's, that's a long time in the future, but this is that bonfire that we were talking about and by building that bonfire, you attract opportunities. So you're basically saying, you know, that bonfire is that you, you know, that you want to have a business or you want to have this great relationship. You want to travel the world or things like that. So you attract the opportunities by stating that goal. When it comes to relationships, everything is focused on friendships. And that, that is because not only are Venus and Mars not making an aspect, they are both in your 12th house. So everything when it comes to love relationships seems to be on hold right now. That means that, you know, if you're already in a relationship, then it's just moving forward without much effort on your part. Uh, but if you are looking for a love relationship, you may want to step back and cultivate some friendships instead, because the energy here makes it very hard for you to be seen. When it comes to home and family, you're pulling energy from that Saturn in your house of children and creativity. Now there's a lot of creative energy going on with you. And so you might be putting the finishing touches on a project or really buckling down to get the majority of it done. Mars is going to make an inconjunct to that Saturn. And so it's very important that you are 
uh, making sure that everything's backed up, that everything's protected. If it's some sort of art project that, you know, that's uh, like bowls and uh, water and all that doesn't get on it. I, I was, I had a picture in my head, but I didn't have words for explaining it. Um, but uh, yeah, to prevent spills is what I was trying to say. Um, so you want to take the steps to protect it because an inconjunct energy can cause a big adjustment. Uh, it also could be that you've gotten to a point in the project and now you think it should go another direction. And so that's something to be a little bit mindful of because it could take you in a direction where you have to do things over and maybe that's going to be worthwhile. And maybe that's just, you know, you not wanting to finish. And so you have to be aware of the reasons you want to make the adjustment. When it comes to your money, you are pulling money from that Pluto in the fourth, as well as that Mars in the 12th house. And that's an interesting combination because the Pluto in the fourth, which we've talked about as being a, um, a sign of potential real estate opportunities. This is also opportunities from ancestors. And now that Mars is in the 12th house, this is about tapping into your either spiritual family or your genetic family and maybe doing a little bit of magic to make things happen. And so really good for you to do feng shui for the house and that would be things like, you know, clearing out the space around the front door to welcome in new opportunities, um, you know, putting, putting certain objects in certain places to stimulate the energy. And it's, you know, if you're not familiar with feng shui, it's kind of like uh, acupuncture for the home. So you put certain things in certain places and, and that, affects the chi energy and therefore you are become more aware of opportunities and and feel you know like you can hang, grab hold of those opportunities so um but you can also do you know you could do folk magic i think i think you uh people call it green magic now and that would be you know with herbs um with candles and things like that you can do prayer meditation those sort of things can activate your money this time now when it comes to income from your business or from um, traditional investments and these are be like stocks and bonds the things your grandfather would have bought uh, you are doing an aspect between uh, Pluto and Venus it's a trine that's a wonderful aspect Venus is hidden in the 12th so that that does give me a little bit of a pause to say that the profits might be there but maybe you're having a little trouble grabbing hold of it or maybe you have to make sure that you know the check does cash or that the person who says they're going to buy your products does follow through but the energy is there now and and i say to be mindful of it because a trine is so easy that you might you know not take the usual steps to check everything so that's where some problems could happen but um, it is one of the best aspects you can get uh, if if that venus was not in the 12th i'd say this was going to be just wonderful so but i'm going to say this is pretty good because at least it's a trying so you have a really interesting energy for money derived from career because you have an excellent house uh, and that is the Sun, Moon, Mercury in that house. That's fantastic. The challenge is that Sun is not making an aspect with Pluto, nor is it making an aspect with Mars. And so that does put you at, at a place where I think you are ready to get more money in your career. But unfortunately, there might be some sort of block from management or from the company itself that's saying we're not giving raises at this time or you know you have to wait until next whatever january or something like that and so this could be a time where you're actually saying to yourself you know if i have to continue waiting perhaps this isn't the right company for me because this is excellent energy for negotiating for a higher salary with another company and so it might be time just to look out in the world and see what else is out there. Um, otherwise, you know, you're getting lots of compliments. You could possibly get somebody added to your team or, you know, get uh, some very important project that, uh, you know, everybody's going to notice you. It's just that 
the money thing seems to be delayed. So when it comes to risky investments, and these would be things like a franchise or Bitcoin or buying precious metals or things like that. And I shouldn't say just buying precious metals, leveraged precious metals. Uh, if you're just buying a gold coin here and there, that's not necessarily a risky investment. Um, but if you're buying, you know, like if, I don't have to explain what a leveraged investment is. You guys know what that is. Um, so it's it's always a little complicated uh, for you because you have the Saturn right now going through this house and it's going to take a very long time to go through it. Uh, now Saturn is making an inconjunct to Mars and Mars is buried in the 12th so we don't we have an aspect, but it's not a good one. We have Mars that is hidden uh, and Saturn, which is restricting things. So you, everything is here that says it's a long shot. It is, it is a long shot where if you have confidence in yourself, if you've done your research, if you have worked hard at this, you, you know, you've kind of appeased Saturn, then you have a good chance of this. But if if you're trying to do this rushed, if you feel you don't really understand it, if you are dealing with anything that is at all shady, then it's not going to pay off. So do be extra, extra careful. This energy will line up better in the future. Right now it's there, but it's kind of like hanging by a thread. Okay, Scorpio natives, you guys are doing this new moon in your house of career. And so you are basically shining everywhere you go. You, you are so noticeable right now. You are the one that people are going to pick. You know, your resume floats to the top if you're looking for a job. If you are, you know, going for a promotion or something, you're the you're you're on the short list. So so all of that is really good. It's it's you know, the only time you don't want to be seen, of course, is like if you're posting something really controversial or if you have a lot of party pictures on your website or website on social media, you you want to probably take those down because those could be noticed as well. But otherwise, this energy is showing people what you can do and how good you are and all that. I know that's kind of counter to, you know, Scorpio normally likes to like stay along the wall a little bit, observe everyone and all that. But, you know, deep down, you know, you have a lot of personal power. And now that personal power is being noticed by others as well as your talents and abilities. So I think this is a good thing. When it comes to love relationships, you're doing great energy because uh, one, you are so visible right now and Venus is making a trine to Pluto and that does mean that things could come very easily. Now it can come so easily that you honestly think that you're not sure whether you want it. Like that was a little too easy. Um, you know, the, the super attractive person asks you out or the person you ask out says they, they can't wait to see you. And so that can put you off a little bit sometimes. But I want to tell you that that's, that's actually just because the aspects you're doing now and with the sun and moon so elevated. So it's supposed to happen this way this time. So take a chance, ask out the person you want to ask out. If, if you have, you know, like if you have access to a matchmaker or your cousin wants to fix you up or something like that, say yes, say yes to that. When it comes to home and family, you're pulling energy from that Uranus in the seventh house, which does say that relatives might be dropping by or there could be some changes going on in the house. Jupiter has moved back into your house. And so that does indicate that something is expanding. So maybe somebody is announcing a pregnancy in the family or somebody is getting married. And so you're adding, you know, in a new daughter-in-law or son-in-law or something like that. This energy also can cause you to look around and say, wow, I certainly have a lot of stuff. And so with the Jupiter there uh, in Aquarius, you might be saying to yourself, it's time to, you know, lighten the load a little bit and do some decluttering. And so that it makes good feng shui sense to let go of things because, uh, you know, the universe abhors a vacuum and so new opportunities will rush in. And so it would be good to look at what you could let go of. 
Now, speaking of that, you are pulling money from that Jupiter that is now in your fourth house, which does mean you can make some money from real estate, uh, getting a roommate, doing Airbnb or selling off stuff. And so th those would be just a couple of the ways. It, it also is um, about how you past generations made money in your family. And that is perhaps you had somebody, you know, a distant relative who made really good, you can pull in that energy. You can do a visualization and request that energy, even if they're already, you know, passed on and on the other side, because you have that family connection, you can do that. So that's something with this retrograde Jupiter that you might not have done before. And now you can do that to pull in more money. When it comes to money from traditional investments or from a business or family business, Mercury is making an opposition to Jupiter. That's a really good aspect. So you can collect some profits. Um, you know, maybe you'll find some of your stocks need to, you know, you need to sell off some stuff so that you can buy some other things and watch those rise. Uh, it's possible that you are expanding your territory or your product catalog. Um, maybe you're raising your prices. All of these things could happen now to bring you more money. Now, uh, your money derived from career is really good right now because you have both Mars and Venus in this house, plus again, that Jupiter opposed Mercury. So that means you're doing probably some of the best energy that you've done all year. And so it's a good time to ask for a better commission schedule, a raise, more hours. And with that sun moon elevated in your chart, you could certainly go out, find another job and then go back to your current employer and say, Hey, you know, these guys are willing to pay more. Are you willing to pay more and do some negotiations that way? When it comes to risky investments, and these are the things that take a lot of time, energy, or money to get going, like, like building a business from scratch where you're trying to go to a bank with a um, business plan and get millions of dollars, something like that, uh, or where you're having to invest lots of money to get it going. Jupiter is making a semi-sextile to Neptune, and that's really good news because you know, for a long while you weren't doing an aspect. And even though Jupiter and Neptune were in the same sign, this is actually stronger. Now it is slightly irritating. And this does say that there's something that is outside your comfort zone that you need to do. And I would suggest that with the Jupiter in that fourth house, you know what it is. You know the thing you need to do and the thing you're kind of dancing around. And maybe it's just picking up the phone to talk to the banker or it is to look your business partner in the eye and say, you know, these are the changes that we need to make. But you have an opportunity to make a substantial gain but you have to do something that you either find very irritating or that is something that's a little bit scary. Okay, Sagittarius natives, you guys are doing this new moon in your house of education, travel, uh, adventure, knowledge, um, foreign things, you know, if you want to really travel far, also legal matters. So you have more luck in this area. It is also shining a light on this area for you. So if you are in some sort of, uh, you know, legal battle, you know, now's a time where new information could come to light that could be very helpful to you. Uh, if you are, you know, getting ready to go back to school, this is a time to, you know, get, or, you know, something together where you're learning how to study more, or maybe you're putting together a place that you're going to study in the house. Um, this is really good energy for travel. So you could be going off to some place where you haven't traveled in a while. So you have a lot of good energy there. Probably the best energy of this is that your connection to the universe is stronger now. And that is that you can do, you know, prayer, visualization, uh, meditations and get, you know, faster, stronger results. Uh, it is, and this is partially because you're more clear about what you want. Uh, when you're doing a visualization for something, if you are doing it in a distracted manner, it's just not that effective. But when you picture something and you picture it, even, you know, the 
fact that you feel it, that you can taste it, that you you see colors, you know, and the, the clearer you can make that picture, the stronger the message is to the universe. Now, some people tell me they have a lot of trouble visualizing. I, in fact, I think there was even, there's, there's some term for people who can't visualize. And if that is the case, then take pen and paper and write it down. Describe it that way and describe it with the words that have, you know, the emotion and the color and the feel to it. That's, that's how you can do that. So you don't have to, you know, visualization can be a picture in your head, but there are other methods to do it. When we look at relationships, you're doing some good energy because Mercury is making an opposition to Jupiter. And so there is an opportunity to meet somebody new, especially somebody from a different place because you have so much energy in this area of foreign things. And this could mean that they just live on the other side of the country, or maybe they were born in a different country and now they live here, or perhaps they're a person who has traveled a great deal. And so you have opportunities to meet somebody. If you're looking to strengthen your relationship, this is a communication house. So it's just a matter of having those conversations and it looks like you'd end up laughing and enjoying things. And so that's really good. When it comes to home and family, you're pulling energy from that Neptune, which is about to get an opposition from Venus. And that is, it's time to have a discussion with the people you live with, or if you live alone with yourself, about what it is that you really want your home to be like. And, you know, maybe, maybe you've you know, picked a picture, uh, you know, from the internet or from a magazine and you want your home to look like this. Or maybe it's just a feel of not being so rushed, having, you know, like more simple living. Uh, there's some great videos on that these days. So this is your opportunity to, to start to picture what it is. <laughs> I'm doing that visualization thing for you guys again, um, to, to get yourself an idea of what you really want at home. When it comes to your money, you're pulling money from that Saturn in your house of communication and Mars is going to make an inconjunct to that Saturn during this period. And that means you need to make some sort of adjustment. And that can be looking at how you're handling your money and doing something different. And you might want to, you know, go back to some maybe classic uh, principles of managing money, uh, you know, like the uh, the book of the richest man in Babylon. Uh, that book, of course, is an audio book somewhere. And so listening to that book and listening to the basic principles while you're hearing a story, which is a nicer way to do it rather than just reading a dry finance book, can be a good way for you to get all this information. By making an adjustment, that shifts the energy enough to help you bring in more money. Now, when it comes to resources and money from a business or traditional investments, uh, the moon's making an opposition to Saturn. And so that's really good energy. It does say you could collect some profits. Uh, maybe you're raising your prices and people are saying, yes, it was, you, you were overdue. You should have raised your prices a long time ago. It's possible that you're getting new customers or clients. So you're able to capitalize on this energy this time. When it comes to money derived from career, you do have some good career energy, uh, but Venus is not making an aspect with Saturn, so it's not turning into actual cash. So you are showing, because the Venus is elevated. It's so funny, I, I feel like I do my sentences in this backwards sort of way. <laughs> you, <laughs> Venus is elevated and so you're doing positive energy and that is that you're getting some sort of recognition for what you're doing. And it, with the sun moon up in the ninth house, it's possible you're even receiving an award, but that award is not translating into actual cash. So it's like you're getting a plaque. And that's still nice because that's, you know, that award can go on your resume and help you in future jobs. It can help you when it's time for a review to remind them that, hey, I got this award and now I want more money. It's just the more money at the moment isn't lining up. When it comes to risky investments, and these are the things that take a lot of time, energy or money to get going. And that would be like investing in someone's business or if you're writing a novel and it takes 
takes you years, then it is, it's a lot of what you're doing on spec, but now you have an aspect and that is that Mars is making an inconjunct to Saturn. And so it says you can make some money, but you will have to make some sort of adjustment. And that could be that maybe you have a business that you're working on and you can sell off a piece of it, or you have a business you've been working on, but it now can't really go in that direction. It has to go in a new direction. Oftentimes, inconjunct energy does pull you outside your comfort zone. So be prepared to do something that maybe takes a little bit of courage, uh, but you can get some help because the Mars is elevated. So somebody could come to you and say, oh, you know, you have this business proposal. I think you should change this, this, and this. And you're going to say, I don't want to change it, but this person is probably correct. Making the change is going to help you move forward. Okay, Capricorn natives, you guys are doing this new moon in your house of resources. And that is money from lots of sources, but also information and help with things. It is also your house of intimacy. So you have some really good energy there. Now, uh, let's start with that one. So that is that if you're looking for a love relationship, you might find someone where there's a, a great deal of chemistry between the two of you. Uh, there's a strong sexual attraction. It may or may not become a long-term relationship, but sometimes, sometimes people want a physical relationship. I think that what this new moon though for you is about is to shine a light on that. If you are always finding only physical relationships, maybe it's time to do things a little bit differently. Uh, if on the other hand, you find a lot of platonic relationships, now is your opportunity to find something that has this intimate component to it. <laughs> intimate component. <laughs> it's such a romantic. Now, of course, this is also shining the spotlight on things like uh, credit card debt, so student loan debt, uh, and ways that you can get lower interest rates or build consolidation loan or something like that. So you have a lot of opportunities in this area this time. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the money part. The other thing that having this new moon is about there is this is where you hold your power and power is actually where you have the ability to make choices in your life that is if if you said that you know you had the resources if you have the skills if you had the strong relationships where you could pick up and move or you could buy a house if you wanted to buy a house or start a business if you wanted to start a business or you have choice over your schedule that's having power now very few of us have all of those at once uh, of course there are a few super rich who have that but we are you know the most of us we have some limitations on this and it, what's important here is to realize where you do have power and where you are trying to get the power. And that is, you know, if you have limitations uh, from a financial standpoint, it would be figuring out how you could pay it down debt or manage your money better. If you had limitations in the relationship, how can you strengthen that relationship so that you have more choice? So looking at power itself and re recognizing what you do have power in. It can be very helpful for then you figuring out how to get more choice in other parts of your life. Now, when it comes to relationships, I already talked a little bit about that. Uh, the moon is making an opposition to Saturn. So again, you have really good energy for relationships this time. This can help you meet somebody new as well as strengthen the existing relationship. Um, of course, that moon is in that house of intimacy that we were talking about. So everything's looking really good in the area of relationships. When it comes to home and a family, you are pulling energy from that Mars in the ninth house. And so you might be uh, thinking about contacting people who live at a long distance from you, uh, you know, distant relatives who live in a long distance and saying, you know, hey, can I come and visit? Or do you want to come and visit? You might be um, considering taking the family on some sort of day trips or maybe planning the holidays. And so there's a lot of energy around travel. This 
energy also is a little on the legal side and so there could be some legal things going on with your home or family and so that means that it could be uh you know that you are dealing with a landlord situation or you're buying a house or something like that with all these planets in that area of resources you know the sun moon mercury that means you have resources to help you so don't think that you're stuck look around and see because there is somebody who will step up and help you when it comes to your money you're pulling money from that uranus in your house of risky investments we'll talk about that in a moment and of course saturn that is slowly going through your house of money now mars is going to make an inconjunct to that saturn during this period and that means that there is some sort of adjustment that is happening perhaps you've been on a really strict budget and now you're feeling like you need to spend something or you have been spending and now you need to go back to a strict budget now an inconjunct does mean that you might be pulled out of your comfort zone a little bit and so that is maybe you have been on such a budget for so long that spending any money on yourself feels uncomfortable it's also possible that you know getting back on a budget where you're watching every penny feels well that can feel uncomfortable too so that's that's the energy that you're doing this time and that's actually energy that's here to help you and to get you on your goals you know sometimes when you're on a really strict budget you need to reward yourself somehow you know a little bit to keep motivated and sometimes when we fall off the wagon we have to get back on when it comes to money from your business family business or um, from traditional investments and those would be the things you know like stocks and bonds the things your grandmother would recognize that everything that you're doing is extraordinary aspects I mean this is your perfect time to raise your prices or expand your territory or look for really sound investments because you have sun moon mercury in that house and the sun is making a square to Uranus so this says that you have opportunities to, to find something that really could bring you in a windfall so you do want to push remember you're doing that Mars in conjunct Saturn so that could be that something's pulling you out of your comfort zone that you're you're having to do something that's a little bit scary um it it also might be that you know doing things in the traditional way sometimes is just really hard you know you it's a lot more work than you know having to have like Bitcoin go up a billion dollars overnight but that's not this energy this energy is more that you invest in something really sound and it pays you a tiny little dividend every month and that causes your investment to grow but this energy is quite good so you want to capitalize on it when it comes to money derived from career the energy is a little bit tenuous it's there but it's not really strong and that is there's there's no aspect going on between Pluto and Uranus but Saturn and Mars are making that in conjunct that we were talking about so this is the co-rulers are making the aspect and because of that everything's kind of derivative you know like it's you can't just go to the boss and say I want to raise but you probably could get more hours or maybe shift your shift with somebody else and therefore you know gain more hours that way there's something that's not so straightforward and also not that comfortable that you're doing to get more money so you I would say you know if it's not obvious what it is then you might just want to wait until this energy lines up because it will do that now when it comes to risky investments and these are the things that take a lot of time and effort and money to get going like buying a franchise or starting a large business uh, the energy that you're doing is quite good because Venus is making a trine to Uranus and Venus is in your house of contracts so something is finally coming to the point where a contract's being written uh where you're looking things over plus with all that help in your area of resources you know if you're doing crowdfunding or uh, something where you're gaining funding um, it looks like the money is coming in so that's really good um, you might be gathering new information you might get some sort of tip 
or, or somebody is mentoring you. So the energy for your risky investments looks really good. Of course, I always want to caution you about making sure that you know what you're doing before you get into it because it's risky. Okay, Aquarius natives, you guys are doing this new moon in your house of relationships, and that bodes very well for relationships in general. This means you can meet new people, uh, and that is for a love relationship, but also a friendship. Uh, you can actually connect with people who are quite important, and that would be influencers or mentors, uh, hiring managers, all of those types of people. If you want to connect with a celebrity, try to get a direct message to them and tell them, you know, what what they've changed in your life and how they've they, how they've helped your life and you may get a message back. That's how good this energy is. Now, where you're shining here is the fact that you are now super visible. And so it is able to bring you opportunities. You just step out of the shadows and then everyone can see you. It's like you're you're at the side of the stage and now you're center stage and the spotlight is on you. And that is just taking a step forward. That means that you have to do the message or the call or the text or something like that. You can't just wait for it to happen. So that is in this case, the bonfire is out there and the person you wanna meet is at the bonfire and you have to go to the bonfire. Now, when it comes to love relationships, the energy is exceptional because the sun is making a square to Uranus and you have Mars and Venus in your house of intimacy. So you can find a love relationship and somebody who there's great chemistry with, you know, and so it's really interesting in love relationships because we always see a chart connection when there's a love relationship. If you, you, you know, you fall for somebody, yes, there is going to be something where your chart connects to theirs. However, sometimes it is that you're aware of the connection and they're not. And that can be oftentimes with North Node connections where, you know, youth are remembering some sort of past life energy with that person, but they don't remember it. And so this is why sometimes you'll be very interested in someone and you're not making the connection with them because the chart connection only goes that one way. But this time you do have good enough energy that you can meet somebody where the chart connection is in both directions. When it comes to home and family, you are pulling energy from that Venus in your house of resources from others. And so you might be refinancing your house at this time. You're going to get a great rate. Uh, you could maybe need a sofa and one of your friends has an extra sofa or something. Um, it's possible that you're gaining a roommate and so you're going to make some money that way or your Airbnb is starting to fill up. So you have a lot of good energy around home and family. And because you have such a good relationship house that means that family is getting along better uh you know you might be getting kids ready to go off to school and so you've got a lot of activity going on but things look good when it comes to your money you are pulling money from that neptune in the second house of money as well as that jupiter that is now in the first now that jupiter reminds you that when you put your name on something you are going to make more money and that is not just saying i did this but also taking the responsibility for it to say i'm going to get it in on time and if there's a mistake i'm going to fix it and when you do that you have the opportunity to make more money the neptune there reminds you that you money has a vibration and when you put yourself in harmony with that vibration you can attract more money and one of the ways to do that is through doing some magic and that would be affirmations meditation lighting candles money incense things like that where you at that moment are focusing on attracting money. And so your brain is focused on it. Your emotion is focused on it. Your body is doing something for it. And so all of you is aligned in that inner, in that area. <sighs> Let me try again. All of you is aligned to that one purpose. And that sends a very strong message to the universe. When it comes to money from your business, from a family business or from traditional investments, you're doing a great aspect. Okay, you're not doing a great aspect, but you are doing an aspect. I should say you have a great house because Mars and Venus are there. And so there 
is quite a bit of money out there. The Mercury that is doing an in conjunct to Neptune, which is that the money's out there outside of your comfort zone. And so that might be that maybe you have trouble charging people money for your services or charging them a fair amount for your services. Maybe you have to call somebody who owes you money and say, please pay me. Or perhaps you have to go to, a, you know, an organization or an institution and say, I want money. But you have the possibilities of bringing in more than usual this time. You just have to make some adjustments and do something that maybe you're a little scared to do. When it comes to money derived from career, for a while you were not doing an aspect, even though Jupiter and Neptune were in the same sign and that was bringing some harmony, but now you're doing a semi-sextile, which while it's a little bit irritating, does say that there is a possibility. So you, right now you could ask for a raise and the boss is going to say yes, but we're going to add this task to your list of things to do, or you have to work these extra hours or something like that. So there's something that's not quite that comfortable, but you could get more money. It's the same thing. If you're looking for a new job, you can have a job come through and maybe there's, maybe it's a little longer commute, but it's bringing you more money or there's that learning curve at the beginning that makes it challenging. So, so the energy's there, you know, if you don't, if you don't like this idea of having to make some sort of minor adjustments, you might just want to wait until the end of the year, because then Jupiter will be in the same sign as Neptune and things will harmonize a little bit better, but you know, that's six months. So if you don't want to wait six months, this is your opportunity. When it comes to risky investments, and these are the things like buying a franchise, doing Bitcoin, or doing any highly leveraged investments, Mercury is making an in conjunct to Neptune, and this means that it is something well outside your comfort zone. It, the good news is it is an aspect, and that does mean that you can make, you know, a bundle of money. That's wonderful. But the outside your comfort zone means that it is like risk on steroids. And so with the Mercury in the seventh house, I would suggest that you find somebody who knows what they're doing and you partner with that person and you partner in a way where you're going to benefit. And maybe you can't find someone to do 50, 50 with maybe this first deal is, you know, 80, 20, and you're only getting this small amount, even though you're doing a lot of work, but this is a type of thing where you have to make some sort of adjustments to gather that treasure. And if you do, then things flow into your life. But if you don't, if you try to find the easy way to do this or cut corners or things like that, you're going to end up with very little. So this is the opportunity to find somebody to help you because you have such a great relationship house. So that's what I would focus on. Okay, Pisces natives, you guys are doing this new moon in your area of routines, habits, um, you know, how you work, how, how you get things done. And it's shining a spotlight on that. And, you know, saying, are you using your time effectively? Uh, could you do things faster? Could you find a way to do things that it's more fun? Um, you know, would you, would you consider dropping some of the things you're doing? Do you need to hire somebody to do things? So it's, it's almost like, a, you know, because you're shining the spotlight that every time you do something, it would be good to ask yourself, is this the best way to do it? Could I hire someone to do this for me? Do I need to do this at all? Could I do this faster? Could I do this in a more fun way? And so, you know, like maybe when it comes to laundry, maybe you hate doing laundry. So then it would be looking at a laundry service and weighing that cost versus the energy and the time it takes, especially if you're going to a laundromat or something like that, uh, you know, it, is it worth it? Could you make it more fun? You know, like, could you gather the kids together and you all have a race of who can fold things the neatest and the fastest, you know, or, you know, could you just assign this to your teenager and say, okay, you know, you're getting an allowance. And so it would be good if you did the laundry and, so looking at all of your habits and things like that, that would be good now. 
This is also your area of health. And so it shines a spotlight on that. And the Leo makes it a little challenging because the Leo part of you says that you just want to enjoy your life. You want to have, you know, the ice cream and the cake and whatever it is that you consider fun and, you know, what kids get. But this is also a time where you have to look at that and say, is this the best thing for me? And that's where you can make some adjustments. When it comes to relationships, you're doing some interesting energy because Mars and Venus are in your house of relationships, attracting people to you. But Mercury is making an in conjunct to Neptune. So you are attracting people that you might not really consider as the person you want to date. They're not really your type. Uh, there's there's something that's making you maybe uncomfortable about the person. So of course, if you're uncomfortable, don't go out with them. But if they're just not your type, if they're, you know, like shorter than you normally go out with, or they're from a different background or something like that, maybe consider, you know, that there could be some possibilities because the Mars and Venus are so good there. You could make a connection that is completely unexpected and you know, make you very happy. When it comes to home and family, uh, you're pulling energy from that Mercury in that house of routine. So we kind of talked about that already, about how you are looking at the different tasks that you do. Yes, you could be looking at work tasks, uh, you know, all the different jobs that you do, but this is a lot about what you do at home and, you know, how much, how much time is spent procrastinating versus actually getting stuff done where then once the thing is done you can actually have guilt-free time off and so i think there's something going on about that this uh you know with the mercury in the sixth house it might mean that you are reorganizing decluttering that you're doing some sort of fall cleaning um it's not really fall yet so this would be summer cleaning <laughs> so <laughs> yeah <laughs> When it comes to your money, you're pulling money from Mars in your seventh house. And so this means the more people you meet, the more people you talk to, the more opportunities you have to make money. This is also about collaborating with people, finding mentors, finding um, people who want to work with you in some way. If you have a job, perhaps you are reaching out to colleagues who have moved on to other jobs. So the Mars here is, is opening a door and it may not feel like it directly is bringing you money, but it leads to money. And that is, you know, that maybe you are connecting with a new friend and then that friend is the person who tells other people about your products or services. So it's, it is very much about meeting people and connecting. And that of course can be in person or online or, uh, you know, through many different means, but it's a one-on-one -on -one connection versus connecting with a group. Now, when it comes to money from your business or your family business or money from traditional investments, Venus is not making an aspect with Mars. And so with so much stuff in the sixth house, what I think is happening is that you're not actually taking profits right now. You're more working on the back office of the business. You are, you know, maybe building your website or updating your product line or changing your labels or things like that. Maybe with your more traditional investments, you are just doing a buy and hold. You're having dividends reinvest. And so you're just gaining more shares that way, but you're not really taking profits. So the, the money coming into your hands doesn't show like it's happening. Happening. So this is a good time to work on the business and or in the business, I guess it's on the business and so that you can then in the future when this lines up, grab the profits. When it comes to money derived from your career, you are doing some interesting energy because the Mars is making an in conjunct to Saturn, but Saturn is buried in the 12th house. And so this is the idea that the boss doesn't know what you've been doing. And so if you will compile a list and meet with the boss and say, look, I've done this and this and this, and this was above and beyond. This is how many hours I've put in. You know, this is the mistakes I caught. This is the, you know, the things that I innovated. You can then 
negotiate for a raise. Now, there is still that in conjunct component, which does say that they may then ask you to do something that is outside your comfort zone or some way that you have to do more work. And so you have to weigh this idea. The same goes for opportunities outside the company where maybe you're looking for another job. It's possible to find one now, but again, there's that in conjunct, which says that you can negotiate for more salary, but maybe the commute is longer or the hours are weird, or, you know, they don't buy you a computer for your home. You have to use your own. Something's going on where it's not exactly lined up. It's still an aspect. So you can achieve something. You can gain more money, but there's, there's a cost to it. <laughs> so, and that can actually make it so it wasn't as great a deal and so you might just want to wait for this energy to line up which it will in the future when it comes to risky investments and these are the things that take a lot of time energy or money to get going uh, Mars is not making an aspect with the moon and so you are still best in research mode there is so much energy in your sixth house and so then I would suggest that you are you know pulling together your team writing your business plan you know making the contacts with that Mars so that when you do have everything ready you can do your presentation you know get your slide deck ready now and so that you can go after the big money when all of that energy lines up it also says that if you already have this bigger venture going on it's just time to get down and do the work uh, that you if you're focused on the profits or the the specific analytics you have to remember this is maybe a long-term thing that you're doing and so some some weeks you just have to plug along without seeing a lot of response and all of that comes later that's that's how it works when you become the overnight success you know you don't see that toil that was behind the scenes and that's kind of what you're doing now and that's it i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already please subscribe and stay tuned because larue wants to say hi Thank you.